Learn OpenCV in three hours. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn everything required to get you started with OpenCV in Python. We will be using Python since it is one of the most popular programming languages and it has opened up numerous job opportunities in various sectors. We will start from the installation process right up to creating exciting projects such as detecting colors, shapes, humans and even vehicle number plates. So if you are a beginner, don't worry, this course is for you. We will skip all the boring theory stuff and focus on the practical implementation. So you can get the computer vision skill set you have always wanted in your CV. By the end of the course, you will become familiar with the core principles of OpenCV and apply different techniques to solve real-world problems using computer vision. If you'd like to learn more about such projects, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell as I upload videos on a weekly basis. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, let's look at the structure of the course. We will start with introduction to images, then perform the required installations. Then we will learn to read images, videos and webcams, along with some basic must-know OpenCV functions. Later we will learn to resize and crop images. Then we will draw different shapes and text on images. From there we will get into some more advanced topics such as word perspective, joining images, color detection, contour detection, and even face detection. After we have understood the fundamentals, we will create three different projects using these core principles. These projects will include virtual paint, paper scanner, and the number plate detector. So let's start with introduction to images. So what are images made of? Let's say I wanted to display the number three. I will take an array of boxes where each box could be filled or empty. So to write the number three, we would color a few boxes to create that shape. Now some boxes are white in color, whereas some are black. We can denote all the black boxes as zero and all the white boxes as one. In this example, we have 10 by 10 boxes. If we wanted more detail, we can increase the number of boxes. In reality, these boxes are pixels. You would have heard of VGA, HD, Full HD and 4K. All of these represent a fixed number of pixels. For example, VGA is 640 by 480. HD is 1280 by 720. This means VGA has 640 boxes in the width and 480 boxes or pixels in the height. Currently, the image we drew has only two colors, black and white. This is known as a binary image. In order to get more detail, we can have an image with more levels. This would mean instead of having only 0 and 1, we will have a range of values. Here we can see the difference between 2, 6 and 16 levels or shades of grey. But still the image is not very clear. So we will be using an 8-bit value. This will give us a resolution of 256, where 0 will be black and 255 will be white. This means we now have 254 colors between white and black. In other words, we have 254 shades of grey. This image is now known as a grayscale image. For a colored image, we have three grayscale images representing the intensities of red, green and blue. In short, RGB. Adding these images together gives us a full color image. This means a colored VGA image is 640 by 480 by 3. So let's start with the installations. First we will go to python.org and we will go to the downloads section. Here we are not going to download the latest version, instead we are going to download 3.7.6. 
as this works well with OpenCV. So we will click on download and then we will head on to the Windows version. Now if you have Mac, you can download the Mac version as well. Once the download is complete, we will install. Make sure to add Python 3.7 to the path. So once the installation is done, we will close the dialog and head on to PyCharm. Now PyCharm is the IDE that we will be using to edit our code. So it is a code editor that will allow us to write our code, but it has a lot of functionalities which will help us in the coding process. So we will head on to its download section and we will download the community version as it is free. Once the download is complete, we will run the installation file. Here we will associate the .py files to PyCharm and we will also add launchers directory to the path. Next we will restart the computer and run PyCharm. So now we are going to create our new project. Here before we start the project we will look into the project interpreter. Now this has to be 3.7. So if it's automatically detected, then we are good to go. So let's write down OpenCV Python and hit create. So now this is the PyCharm environment. Over here we have the area where we will write the code and on the left hand side we have the project files and the project folders. So if we open up our folder we only have the environment, the virtual environment that was created. Now we need to install libraries or packages in, these, uh, in this environment. So we will go to file, settings, project, project interpreter and here we will add and search. Now we will write OpenCV and here we have OpenCV Python. So we will click on install package. So once the installation is done we will close this, hit OK and now we will create our first Python file. So we will right click on our project, we will go to new and we will create a Python file. Here we will say chapter 1. Now as you can see in our project we have the chapter 1.py file and here is where we can write our code. So let's import our OpenCV package. So we will write import and then CV2. CV2 stands for computer vision. Then we will print package imported. Now if everything runs fine, this should output package imported. So we will right click on the chapter one and we will press run. So now in the console we can see the package imported message has been sent. This means that our package is successfully imported and now we can proceed further. So the first thing we will learn is how to read images, videos and webcam. So in order to read images we have a function by the name I am read. So let's start by declaring the variable in which we will store the image. So we will call it IMG and then we are going to use our package which is CV2 and then inside that package we have the function I am read. Now this means we are reading an image. Now all we have to do is mention the path where this image is present. 
So I have created a resources folder in which we have the image lina.png. So we are going to define the path of this. So it is in the resources and then it is lina.png. So this imports our image from our resources folder, but now we need to display it. So to display, we have the function known as I am show. So we will use our package cv2 dot I am show. And in I am show, we have to define two arguments. The first one is the name of the window. So we can say our output. And then we have to define which image do we want to display. So we will say IMG. So let's run this. Now the image did appear, but it went out immediately. So in order to add a delay so that we can see, we will write CV2 dot wait key, and then we will add the delay. If we put zero, it means infinite delay. But if we add a value, it means that many milliseconds. So for example, 1000 will mean one second. So for now, we will put zero and run. So here is our output image. So next we are going to learn how to import a video. So we have a video in the resources folder by the name test video. So let's import that. So we are going to remove what we had before. So now we are going to create a video capture object. So let's call it cap cv2 dot video capture. So now in this video capture, again, we just have to define the path where our video is. So we will type in resources and then we will say, uh, we will mention the name of the video. So which is test underscore video dot mp4. So this will import our video, but now we need to display it. And as you know, video is just a sequence of images. So we will need a while loop to actually go through each frame one by one. So we will add a while loop while true. Now we will capture our image. So all this will do is it will save our image in this variable and then it will tell us whether it was done successfully or not. So this uh, variable will be a boolean, which is true or false. Next, we are going to show this result. So we will use the I am show function as before, and then we will type in our video, for example, and then we will say IMG. Now we are going to add something that will add the delay and wait for the keyboard Q press if we want to break out of the loop. So you do not need to go into the detail of how this works. All you need to know is that this adds a delay and it looks for the word, uh, the key press Q in order to break the loop. So let's run this and see what happens. So here we can see our video. Now the video is quite short, so it played and it turned off. So here you can see, and if we press Q, it will close. 
So that's great. Now we have successfully imported a video. Next, we are going to learn how to use a webcam. Now, using a webcam is very similar to importing a video. So instead of the file path, we are just going to write the ID of our camera. So if you just have one webcam or you have a laptop connected, so you can press zero and this will use the default webcam. If you have more than one, you can add the ID as you go along. So here we will create this webcam object and then we will define some parameters for it. So we want it to be of a specific size. So we will define the width, which is uh, the ID number three as 640. And then we will define the height, which is ID number four as 480. Now, the rest of the code pretty much remains the same. So let's run this and see what happens. So here you can see the live feed from my webcam. So as you can see, the brightness is not very pleasant. So what we can do is we can change the brightness from the settings and the ID for that is 10. So we can write, for example, 100. So now you can see the brightness is much more pleasant. So let's have a look at some basic functions that will be required quite often when we are building OpenCV projects. So let's start by importing an image. We will use the imread function and we will define the file name as lena in the resources folder. Now, the first thing we will do is we will convert it into grayscale. So to do that, we will define our gray image, IMG gray, which is equals to, now we are going to use the functionality or the function from the CV2 package known as color CVT. Now, CVT color basically converts your image into different color spaces so you have to define your image the one you want to convert and then you have to define which color space do you want it to be converted to so here we are going to convert it into grayscale now conventionally we use red green and blue which is rgb but in opencv the image convention the channels are bgr so we will write bgr to gray so let's output that and see what happens so we will use cv2 dot im show and here we will write the file name or the window name let's say we will call it gray image and we will display our gray image img gray and again, we need to add cv2 dot weight key and we will put it as zero. So let's play this and see what happens. So here we have our gray image. Now let's move on to the next function, which is blur. So we will declare our blur image. Now we are going to use the Gaussian blur function to blur our image. So we will write cv2 dot Gaussian blur and <clears throat> we will use our, we can use our original image which is the colored image or we can use our gray image to add the blur. 
So let's use the gray image. And now next, if you see here, you can see it says K size, which is your kernel size. So you need to define the kernel size. So we will say, for example, this is seven by seven. So it will add quite a bit of blur. So uh, it has to be odd numbers. So uh, it can be three by three, uh, five by five, seven by seven. So we will write that and then we will say that our sigma x is zero. So don't worry about too much of all the details. We are just scratching the surface of how we can get up and running. So we will copy this and we will write here blur and here we will change it to blur as well. So let's play that. And here we can see the difference between these two images. So here is the gray image and here is the image added with the blur. Next, we are going to look at an edge detector. Now this particular edge detector is known as Kenny edge detector. So in order to find the edges in our image, we will use the image Kenny. Uh, we will call it image canny and then we will use our canny function we will assign the image and now we will add the threshold values so we have two thresholds so for the sake of simplicity we will put it as 100 and 100 so now you can go higher or lower but again it depends on your particular situation so let's copy that and we will go and write canny and here we will write canny. So let's run this and there you go. So here you have the canny image, the blur image and the gray image. So here we can see we are getting a lot of curve, uh, a lot of edges. So if we wanted to reduce that, we will change the value of the thresholds. For example, we can put this to 200 and we can put this to 150. So let's run that again. And here you can see the difference. Now the edges are quite low. Next, we will look into dilation. Now, sometimes we are detecting an edge but because there is a gap or because it's not joined properly, it does not detect it as a proper line. So what we can do is we can increase the thickness of our uh, edge. So in order to do that, we will use image dilation and then we will write cv2.dilate. Now here we will use the image canny because we are talking about edges and then we have to add a kernel. Now a kernel is just a matrix that we have to define the size of and the value of. So in this case we need a matrix uh, which has all one values but we need to define the size of that matrix as well. So as I've mentioned before there is a library or a package that helps us deal with matrices and that library is numpy but we did not install it yet so we are going to go to file we are going to go to settings here we will go to our projects and we will add numpy and we will hit install once the installation is done, we will go back and we will import NumPy as NP. So whenever we want to call a function, we can write NP dot whatever the function is. So in this case, we are going to define a kernel. So <clears throat> let's say our kernel is equals to NumPy dot once which means we want all of the values to be one and we will define the size of the matrix which is five by five then we are just defining the type of the object 
which is unsigned integer of 8 bit which means the values can range from 0 to 255 so we'll go down and here we will add our kernel after that we need to define how many iterations we want the kernel to move around which means how much thickness do we actually need so iterations is equals to let's say one so we are going to copy that and we will write image dilation and here we will write dilation image dilation image so let's run that and here you can see this is the original canny image and this is the image with dilation so if we increase the iteration number let's say we do something dramatic and put five then we see a massive change in the thickness so the next function we are going to learn is the opposite of dilation which is erosion so we are going to make it thinner so for that we will define our image as image eroded is equals to cv2 dot erode function and again we need to define uh, which image do we want to erode so we will take the dilation image and we will erode that and then we need to define the kernel again so we will keep the kernel same and again we need to define the number of iterations so in this case we are going to put for example uh, one so let's put this back to one and we will add our image for erosion so here is our eroded image here is our dilation image and here is the original canny image Let's have a look at the OpenCV convention. In mathematics, while plotting a graph, the positive side of the x-axis is towards east, and the positive side of the y-axis is towards the north. In OpenCV, the x-axis is the same, but the positive y-axis is towards the south. To understand it further, let's look at an image. Given that this image is 640 by 480, the origin of the image would be at this point whereas the maximum width and height would be at this point. Looking at a few more points, we can further understand the convention. First, we are going to learn how to resize an image. Now, to resize the image, we need to know the current size of our image. So here we have a simple example where we are importing the library and then we are importing a image by the name Lambo which is short for Lamborghini and uh, we are just displaying it so let's look at our image so this is our image now to find the size of our image we are going to write print and then we will check the shape of our image so img dot shape so if we run this again it gives us 462 by 623 by 3 now this first 462 is the height 623 is the width 3 is the number for your channels which is BGR now in order to resize we are going to use the resize function so we will write IMG resize is equals to cv2 dot resize and here we are going to write uh, which image we want to resize 
which is our main image and then we need to define the width and the height of our resize so here we have to define the width first and then the height so the width let's say we want to make it so currently we have 623 let's make it 300 and we can make the height as 200 so let's show this image So here is our original image and here is the image that we have resized. So as you can see, we have successfully resized the number of pixels. So if you want to check the shape again, you can write print and instead of image, we can write image resize. So if you print that again, you can see the original image is the one above and the resized image is the one below. So the same way you can actually increase the number of pixels as well, but of course it will not increase the quality, but it can increase the number of pixels. So for example, 1000 by 500. So here we have a stretched out image. Uh, so yeah, so you can do that too. So next we are going to learn how to crop an image and cropping can be very useful uh, when you want specific parts of an image now image itself is just a matrix or an array of pixels so what we can do is we can deal it uh, in terms of an array or a matrix so what we can do is we can write image cropped is equals to image so this is our main image that we want to crop but now we don't need an open cv function we can just use the matrix functionality so we can say we can define the starting point and the ending point for both our width and height so for example uh, now this is a little bit tricky because the height comes first and then the width uh, above in the open cv function the width came first and then the height so here we have the height first and then the width. So we want to uh, define uh, how much height do we want to maintain. So let's say we want, um, so this is our uh, maximum height, 462. So let's say we are going to keep it from 0 to, 100, uh, 0 to 200. So 0 till 200. And then the width we are going to keep, let's say, for example, from uh, 200 to 500. So 200 to 500. So we are going to display this now. So let's run it. And there you have it. So this is your cropped image. So we can hide our um, resized image. And there you go. This is your cropped image coming directly from your main image. So if we can just put it back, it will go somewhere here. Yes. So what we have done is um, if you can, yeah, if we can do it like this, we can see better uh, the numbers. So the height we cropped from zero to 200. So this is your starting point zero and Till here is 200 so this area till here is 200 and then the width is from 200 so we started from this point 200 and we went till 500 which is this point so this is how you can uh, crop an image So now we are going to learn how to draw shapes on images. We will learn how to draw lines, rectangles, circles, and we will also learn how to put text on images. So first we will create a matrix filled with zeros. Now zero means black. So we will use the NumPy library to actually create our matrix. So we will write image is equals to np.zeros 
now inside that we will define the size of our matrix which will be 512 by 512 and then we will just display our image so let's write it down here uh, cv2 dot i am show and then we have the window which is image and then the image itself so if we run this and there you go so this is our black image now this is a grayscale image because it has only 512 by 512 uh, pixels or boxes so we can we can confirm that by printing this out uh, and we can write image dot shape this is how you check the dimensionality of an image or a matrix so this is 512 by 512 as we have mentioned here but now if we wanted to add the the color functionality we have to give it three channels so we will write that this is 512 oh, this is 512 by 512 by 3. This gives us the values from 0 to 255. Now next we are going to look at how we can color this image. So if we wanted to color the complete image we will just write IMG. We will say that we want to do it for the whole image and then we will define the color. So for example, I want it to be blue. So I will write 255, uh, 255 and 0 and 0. So if we run this now, you will see the whole image becomes blue. Now what does this colon in the middle means? So if you remember from the previous chapter when we did cropping, uh, we used uh, the limits of width and height so this is the same uh, the same concept so for example if i write here 200 and 300 then i will write another range uh, the first range is the height and the second range is the width so let's say i write here 100 to 300 so if i run this now you will see the colored part is only the range that we have defined here so if we wanted to color the whole image, we will just write a colon. This means that it is for the whole image itself or the whole matrix. Now, moving on, we will learn how to create. Uh, let's, let's just put this back to black. And let's just comment this out as well. Now, we will learn how to create lines. So for line, we have the cv2.line function. So cv2.line. And then we have to define uh, which image are we talking about. So we're, we will say img, which is our image. Then we have to define the starting point and the ending point of the line. So the starting point, let's say we will put 0, 0. And the ending point, let's say we will put... 300 and 300 then we need to define the color so we will say 0 then 255 and let's say 255 this will give us green and then we can define the thickness it is not important but uh, you can define the thickness so let's say we'll put it as 3 so let's run that and there you go so our image is now green um, uh, sorry, our image has now a green line and it starts from 0, 0 and it goes up to 300, 300. Now, if you wanted to bring it till the end, uh, we, what we can do is we can write the width and height instead of giving it a number. So, uh, we know that image uh, width and height we can get from the shape. Now, the shape matrix has three elements the the height the width and the channels so the first one is zero uh, which is the height so in this uh, annotation we have to define the width first so we will write here one and then we will write here image dot shape and then we will write here zero so this is the height uh, this is the height and this is the width so if we run that we should get uh, a diagonal line going all the way 
Okay, that's great. So next we will move on to a rectangle. So we will write cv2 dot rectangle and it follows the same convention. So you have to write the image and then you have to define the points. Let's say zero zero and then we have to define the ending point. So that will be uh, the corner point at the diagonal point and uh, let's say that is 250 by 350 okay and then we will add the color so let's change the color this time so we'll put 0 0 and 255 and then we have to define the thickness so thickness let's say 2 so let's run this and there you have your rectangle now um, the thickness you can increase but what if you wanted to fill this area so you can't just keep increasing the thickness until it gets you know in the middle well you can do that but it's not a good idea but uh, cv2 f actually has a function for that so you you can write cv2 dot filled and you have to write it in capital letters so you can use that to actually fill your rectangle so next we will move on to let's let's put it back first um, next we will move on to circles so we will write cv2 dot circle and then we will write our image we have to define uh, the center point of this im uh, the circle so let's say 450 then we have to define the radius let's say 30 and then we need to define the color color we can put 255 255 i think it will be a shade of blue and uh, let's put thickness as five let's see here you go okay so now you have the circle and you can see our uh, center point is 450 which means we start from here till here 400 and from here till here is 50 and we have the light blue color okay so next we are going to learn how to put text on images so we have the function called cv2 dot put text and we will write again uh, like before we will write our image and then we have to define what text do you want to show so we can display here for example open cv it should be saying okay open cv and then we will write uh, the origin where we will start it so let's say we want to start it at 300 and 100 okay and then now this one is a little bit different than before we have to define the font of our text so cv2 already has a few fonts in its library but uh, there's there's not not a lot of them but we have a few so you can write cv2 dot uh, font cv2 dot font and then uh, a bunch of fonts will show up uh, we don't need anything fancy so we will just select the first one and then we have our scale then we have our color let's put it 150 and then zero and then we have our thickness so let's run this and see how it looks like so there you go we have it in green written open CV so let's let's put it down a little bit so we will put it down let's say 200 yeah so let me show you what thickness and scale does to the text so if i increase it to two now you will see it's much bigger in fact it's going out of the image itself so let's put it back to one by the way you can put it at uh, points uh, decimal places as well so you can write 0 0.5 and it will it will become really small and then you can define the thickness as well so for example we'll put this as one 
and here you can see the difference. So now we are going to learn how to use word perspective on an image to get its bird eye view. So what we have here is an image by the name cards in the resources folder and all we are doing is we are displaying it using the I am show function. So if we run this we will get our image. What we will do is we will try to get this king of spades and we will try to get it as flat as possible. So we, we will need the four points and using these four points we are going to apply the board perspective. So the first thing we will do is we will define our four corner points of the card. So I've already taken the numbers and we will just type them in. So we will declare points as a numpy array of float And inside that, we will have four different points. So let's type in the values. I have one, one, one. Then we have two, one, nine. So this is for this particular image and for that particular card that we were referring to before. So this is one, eight, eight then 154 if you want to get these values you can open up paint on windows and it will uh, when you move your cursor around at the bottom it will give you the values of the pixels so those are our points now for each one of them we need to define which corner are we referring to so is this origin as in the first point on the left hand corner and is this the last one so you have to define all of these so in point two we are going to define it float 32 and then again we have four points so first we have our zero zero then we have width and zero then we have zero and height and then we have width and height now we did not define width and height that's why it's giving an error so let's define width and height so a playing card is normally 2.5 by 3.5 inches so we will keep the aspect ratio so we can put 250 by 350 so now we will get our matrix the transformation matrix that will be required for the perspective itself so the matrix we can get by cv2 uh, so we have a function get perspective transform so get perspective transform there you go so you have to define the points so points uh, one and points two now we can get our output image uh, based on this matrix so we can say image output is equals to cv2 dot warp perspective warp perspective and then we need to define our source image and we have to define our matrix and then we have to define the width and the height uh, that we uh, defined earlier so width and the height so now if we output this image let's see cb2 dot i am show and then we can say output and then we have our image output why it became double okay so let's run that 
and there you go so we are getting the word perspective of uh, this image based on these points so now we are going to learn how to join images together now this can be useful if you have a lot of images and you are running it again and again so it's hard to manage uh, all these windows together so we will put all the images together in one window so let's see how we can do that so we have an image here by uh, the name Lena uh, in the resources folder and we are going to stack it uh, with itself so first we are going to use the horizontal stack function so horizontal here we will say numpy dot now these are numpy functions not opencv functions so we will use numpy horizontal stack and we will write our image first the first image is image and then image again so let's display this i am show uh, no. so let's display this cv2 dot i am show our window name is horizontal and we will write our image actually it's better to write img horizontal and then img horizontal so let's run that and there you go so now we have uh, the image stacked together uh, with itself in the horizontal direction now let's do the vertical so image vertical is equals to np dot vertical stack and then we will define image and image so we will copy this paste it down image vertical and we will call this vertical Okay, so now we have two images, uh, one horizontally stacked and one vertically stacked. Now, there are a few issues uh, with this method. One, uh, we cannot resize the image. Uh, it will come as it is. So if I wanted to stack uh, two more images on, on, on the right-hand side, uh, it will take up the whole space or it might go out of the frame. So the other issue is that if the images do not have the same number of channels, which means uh, they are not RGB, both of them, or maybe one of them is gray, one of them is RGB, then it will not work. So both of them have to have the same number of channels because we are talking about matrices. So what is the solution for that? So for that, uh, I have created a small function uh, that can be called and it can handle all these things. So all you need to know is how to um, call that function. So let's look at that function. I will copy that here. So I will just comment this out. And at the top, I will add the function. So here we have our function. Let's bring this down. So you do not need to worry about all the details of uh, this function. You just need to know that it stacks images together. How to use it, this is what you need to know. So let me explain how it works. So what you need to do is you need to um, create an image stacks for example you can say image stack is equals to now you will call the function stack images and then as it mentions you have to mention the scale so you can scale all the images down and you can scale them up as well so let's say we will put 0 0.5 as the scale and then you need to define the matrices of the images so let's say i have image image and image so this will give us a horizontal stack oh wait we need to display it so let's copy that and we will write here 
image stack and we will write here image stack so there you go so now it's scaled down and um, we have three images together so now if we wanted to add the vertical stack we will just add a comma and then we can add another row but again uh, if if you have three columns in the first uh, row then you have to have three columns in the second so it's quite intuitive anyway so here you can see you have uh, easily you can stack all the images together and even if it's uh, one of the images is not uh, the same channels you can still stack them together so let me demonstrate that image gray is equals to cv2 dot <coughs> cvt color and then we can put our image and cv2 dot color bgr2 gray and we can put let's say in the middle here the gray image so let's run that and there you go so you have a gray image uh, stacked with the other uh, colored images So here we are importing our library and we are uh, importing an image in the resources folder by the name lambo.png. So we are just displaying it using the IM show function and we are uh, adding a delay so that it does not stop, uh, it does not disappear. So this is our image. So our task will be to detect the orange color in this image. So first we are going to convert this into HSV space. So we will say image HSV is equals to, now uh, as you remember, we have been using the CVT color to convert it into grayscale. So we will use the same function CV2 uh, color to convert it into HSV. So we will say that we want to convert our image and we want to, it to be cv2 dot color color underscore uh, bgr to hsv so this will convert the image into hsv we can copy this and then we can check out our new image so here we have our new image which is the hsv and I did not write a new name, that's why it's overwriting HSV. So this is the original and this is the HSV. So now we need to define some color values, some ranges in which we want our color to be. So we will define the hue, the saturation and the value limits. And within that limit, uh, if the image region falls within that uh, color range, we will grab that so let's do that so but one thing to note is that we do not actually know what are the minimum and maximum values uh, that we need for this particular orange color so what we are going to do we are going to introduce something known as track bars that will help us play around uh, with the values in real time so that we can find the optimum minimum and maximum values of our color so to introduce track bars we are going to create let's create it on the top here so we are going to create a new window by uh, let's say by the name track bars so we will say cv2 dot named window we will call it track bars and then we are going to resize it so that it is not uh, weird looking and we will write here track bars now th th this name should be the same so just keep in mind not to do any spelling mistakes here and then we need to define the size let's say 640 by 240 then we are going to create our first track bar cv2 dot create now we are using the create track bar function now uh, keep in mind that the T here is capital. So first we will define what value are we going to change using this track bar. So this is just a name, so we can write anything. 
So the first value we will be changing will be the hue minimum. And next we are going to define which uh, window are we going to put this trackbar on. So we have already named our window as trackbars. So we are going to use that. Now we have to define the, the current value. So when the script runs, what will be the initial value that it will run with? So we will put it at zero. And what will be the maximum value of our hue? Now, as you know, uh, hue has a maximum value of 360. Now, but we do not have 360 here. Um, in OpenCV, we have till 179, which is basically 180 values. So we will put 179. And at the end, we have to, uh, we have to call a function which will run every time something changes in the trackbar so every time the user changes the trackbar it will call this function but we are going to get the values in another way i will show how we will use that later on but for now we do have to define this function so but we can say this is an empty function and at the top we can define empty and we can say that uh, just pass that's it so that will pretty much do nothing so that's how you create the trackbar. So all you need to do now is to run and see what happens. Whoops. Okay, so once we run it, we are getting this error, which says cv2.resize. It's not actually resize, it's resize window. So we will resize window and let's play that again. And we should have, a tr yeah we have the trackbar here. So we have the hue minimum and you can see that the value uh, is basically going, okay, we are missing. Yeah, we just need to put here something. It will take in an argument and that's it. We will run that again. And if we use the trackbar again, so now you can see that the hue value is moving around and the minimum is zero and the maximum is 179. So uh, how many values do we need? Uh, we need six values because we will have hue minimum, then um, hue maximum, then saturation minimum, saturation maximum, and value minimum and value maximum. So we will copy this a couple of times and we will just change this to max. And then we will change this to saturation saturation and again we will change this to max and uh, minimum will stay the same this will be value this will be value and this will be max so now uh, these values they range from 0 to 255 so we will write 255 and the initial values we will keep them the same but for the maximums, we will keep them at maximum. So here we will put 179, here we will put 255, and here we will put 255. So if we run that now, we will have six track bars that we can move around. So that is good. Um, yeah, that's pretty much good. So what we will do next is we are going to read these uh, trackbar values so we can apply on our image. So here we are going to get our values using the get trackbar position function. So we will say our h minimum basically is equals to cv2, cv2 dot get trackbar position there you go so then we will write which which value are we talking about now the spelling here have to be exactly the same so we will write this here and then we are going to say uh, to which uh, trackbar window does it belong so our window name is trackbars so I'm going to copy this and I will paste this here so to confirm we can just print h underscore minimum now in order to get the value what we need to do is we need to put it in a loop because um, we have to run it again and again to keep getting that value so instead of the image we will have to change it to a webcam or just add a loop so we can write here while 
true uh, we want this to keep running and we will put this in as well so uh, instead of adding complexity we can just put one here and that should do it so right now we can see the value is zero and then if we change it you can see the value keeps changing right so next we are going to apply this to all of them and we will copy this so that we have all the values so we will do it again five times and uh, this time around this will be max then minimum and max and then minimum and max then we will have the saturation okay then we have the saturation then the value and then the value so that is about that and then we will write here max and here will be saturation saturation and then max here will be minimum value and then value and then max so we can print all of them out just to see uh, just to make sure that if it is correct we will just say h minimum then h maximum then we will say s minimum then s maximum then value value minimum and value maximum so let's see how that works out so there we have it 0 179 0 255 0 and 255 so if i change my values you can see the track bar actually changes these values in real time so now that we have these uh, minimum and maximum ranges of the hue saturation and value we will use these values to filter out um, our image so that we get that particular image in that range uh, particular color in that range so uh, now we will create a mask uh, we will say that the mask is equals to cv2 dot in range so we are creating a mask that is in the range of these colors so which image are we talking about we are talking about the hsv image and then we have to give it the minimum and the maximum range so we will say this is the lower limit and we will say this is the upper limit now we need to define this lower and upper limit so we will write here uh, let's do the lower first lower is equals to we will uh, create a numpy array so let me just add that here import numpy as np now down here we are going to add a numpy array so np dot array and then we are going to create the minimum array so which is h minimum and then we have s minimum and then we have the value minimum Va value minimum uh, the same way we are going to do for the maximum so we will say upper is equals to numpy dot array and we will add our maximum limits which is h max then s max and then val max okay so this will give us the mask so basically what it will do it will filter out and give us the um, filtered out image of that color so let's see how that looks like uh, or no need to copy that we can just paste this here and we can say this is the mask and this will be mask so let's run that and there we have the mask here we have the original image and here we have the track bar so if i move this around you can see how the value uh, how the image changes so we want to keep all the colors that we don't want as black and we want to keep the color that we need in white so 
if I was to detect the orange, I would say that is pretty much good. So uh, I recommend keep changing the values, try to keep it smoother and smoother and eventually you will get some good results. So now that we have these um, uh, these values, what we can do is we can put them as our initial values. So we have 0, 19, 110, 240, 153 and 255. So we can go back here, we can still open up our track bar and we can go up here oh it's let me keep it on the side and i can just see what it is so this is zero and then this is 19 this is 110 and this one is 240 then we have 153 and then 255 so now if i run this again by default i will get the mask right and um, next what we can do is we can uh, get our result which will be our original image so instead of getting this black and white mask we can get the actual uh, colored part the orange color over here so how we can do that is by creating uh, using this mask we will create a new image so we can say image result is equals to we are going to um, we are going to use the and operation so we have the bitwise and operation which will add um, uh, two images together uh, to create a new image so it is basically checking both the images and wherever the pixels are both present it will take that as a yes or as a one and it will store that in the new image so what it does is we are going to say that we have our original image that we want to use and uh, our new image will be also uh, like our original image but with a mask applied which is our mask which is the one we created before so let's look at the image results image result and we should change the name here let's run that and there you go so now we have the colored image so if you did not get that basically we are we are checking these two images the mask and the original image and we are checking wherever we have these white pixels we are getting from this image and creating a completely new image from it so that is what we are doing so one thing we can do here is to add our uh, function from our previous chapter in which we join the images so that we don't have to play with all these images again and again so if we go back to our previous chapter we have the stacking function we can copy that and bring it here uh, yeah, let's bring it here and then now we can go down. This is the by the way the tracking function So uh, sorry the stacking function. So it is stack images So we can go down and instead of showing all these images separate we can just show the stacking image so what we can say is that stacked or we can say img stack img stack is equals to uh, now we have to write our function which is uh, stack images we have to define the scale the scale uh, let's keep it at 0 0.6 and then we have to define the array of images so we are going to put here we are going to put here the images that we need so we can put um, two images and then two images okay so we will create img and then img hsv and then in the new row we can create uh, we can add the mask and then the image uh, result 
and then we just need to display the final image so we can stay say start images and we will write here img stack so let's remove all of these and we can play again and there you go so now we have a neat oh, so now we have a neat image uh, with all these images stacked up and showing us the values all together so now we can have the trackbar on one side and we can see the results directly applied uh, in real time so let's check what the results are and yeah so so that's how you can detect colors So now we are going to detect shapes in an image. So we will detect their contours, the corner points, and based on those, we will decide what is the shape of this object. So what we have is our packages. We have the image of shapes in the resources. And what we are doing is we are just uh, printing it out using the IM show function. So this is our image. It has a uh, triangles, circles, uh, square, and rectangles. So we are going to detect each one of them and we will categorize uh, which category it belongs to and we will show how many corner points it has plus the area of each of the shape. So let's start. So we are going to pre-process our image first. So we are going to convert it into grayscale and then we will find the edges so that we can find their corner points. So let's start by converting it into grayscale. So we will use the CVT color function. And here we will write our image that we want to change and we will define what color do we want the channels to be. So we will say BGR to gray. Then we will add a little bit of blur. So we will use the Gaussian blur function. So we have our image gray and then we need to define the kernel. So we will um, say, let's say it is seven by seven and then we have the sigma. So um, the, the higher the value of the sigma, the more blur you will get. So let's let's put it at one and we will see if we need more. So uh, then we are going to detect the edges. Actually, before that, let's print it out and see if everything is working well. So we have the uh, image gray, image gray, and then we have the image uh, blur. So we will write here gray and we will write here blur. So if we run this, we should get three images. And yeah, so we are getting the gray image and then we have some blur added to it. Actually, at this point, it will be a good idea to use our um, stacking function so that we don't have to play with that too much. So in chapter six, we, yeah, this is the function we used so let's copy that and we will go back and we will paste it here at the top so let's use the stacking so we will say that our image stack is equals to stacked images we will give it a scale of 0 0.6 and then we will define our image array now inside that, uh, let's say we are going to put our image and then image gray and then our image blur. So we can remove all of these and then we can just say stack and then image stack. So if we run this and there you go. So we have our image, uh, all three images stacked together. So next we are going to find the edges in our image. So we will use the canny edge detector. So we will write image canny is equals to cv2.canny 
scanny we will define the image we'll give it the blur image and then we have to define the threshold so we can just um pick some threshold let's say 50 and 50 and see if it works well so we can add another um another row and um, so we can add the image canny image canny and then the rest we can keep the same or um, we can define a black image so we can define our image blank so we can say image image blank is equals to numpy dot zeros like uh, image and then we can put this here let's run this and there you go so now we have our edges and from these edges we are going to find our contours so let's go back and uh, now we are going to create a function so earlier we were not creating functions but because this is a little bit uh, of more code so now we are going to create a function so let's go up here and we are going to define a function by the name get contours so in this we are going to define our image and it will input an image and then from there we will find our contours so the first thing we will do is we will write um, contours and then we will write hierarchy hierarchy let's keep it small and then we are going to use our cv2.findContour function find contours now in that we have to define our image the one we want to find the contours in and the second parameter is our retrieval method uh, we have different types of uh, retrieval methods the one we are going to use is the external method so retrieval we will write r e what is it r e t e r yeah r e t e r yeah external and uh, what this does is it um, it retrieves the extreme outer contours uh, there are other alternatives that will detect all the contours they will not be filtered out but uh, this one is specifically good if you want to find the outer details uh, or the outer corners so we will use this and then we have the uh, approximation where uh, you can request for all of the information or you can request for compressed values so it will reduce the points for you for this example we are going to get all the contours that we have found so we will say uh, cv2.chain approximation as none so once we have our contours they are saved in the contours so what we will do is we will say that we want to loop through it so for um, c and t in contours contours so for each contour we are going to um, find the area first so we will say area is equals to cb2 dot uh, contour area and we will just mention the contour that we want to find the area for now the second thing we will do is we will draw this contour so okay let's uh, before we do that let's just print it out so you can see um, what kind of areas are we getting so if we run this Oh, actually we have to call the function my bad so we need to go down and here we will say uh, get contours and we will send the image canny and there you go so these are all the areas we are finding for each of uh, what do you call the 
shapes that we have detected. So next we are going to draw them so that we can see them clearly. Uh, we are going to use the draw contours function. So cv2 dot draw contours. We will give it the image that we want to draw it on. So we are going to use, um, let's create, I don't want to put it on the original image. So what we can do is we can create a copy of our original image. So we can say here that image uh, contour is equals to image dot copy. So we will copy the image so that we can put the drawings on this image, uh, the image contours. So we are going to define, where is it? So we will say image contour, we want to put it on that. And uh, then we have to uh, give it the contour itself. So that will be CNT. And uh, then we have the contour uh, index. So here we will say negative one because we want to draw all the contours and uh, then we have to write 255 then let's say we are going to make it what color is that that is blue okay and uh, then we will put it as thickness as three so uh so each time it will loop it will draw the complete contour it finds in cnt so this is what this statement is doing so let's run that and oh we did not put the image contour here so image contour and there you go so now we have all the shapes and we have detected all the contours you can see there is a blue line around them uh, and it seems to have detected fairly well so next what are we going to do so next we are going to check um for the minimum area so we will uh, give it a threshold normally um if, if it's just an image like this you don't have to but it's a good idea to give a minimum threshold for the area so that it does not detect any noise so we can say if our area is um, greater than for example uh, 500 500 pixels then we are going to do the calculations, the maths um, of it. Uh, if we want to completely neglect it, then we will just put it down here rather than up there. And if we write that, and we can see all of our uh, shapes have areas greater than 500. So we should not have any issues. So the next thing we are going to do is we will calculate the curve length so the curve length will help us uh, approximate the corners of our edges uh, corners of our shape so let's write that down so we are going to write here parameter is equals to cv2 dot arc length and we want to find the arc length of our contour and we will say that um, it is closed so we will put it as true so we can we can print this out if you want to see it print parry and parry. so so now we are getting the length of each of the contour uh, the arc the arc length or the parameter uh, what do you call or the contour parameter so next we are going to approximate um, the the corner points how many corner points we have so we will write approx is equals to cv2 dot approx poly and we are going to give our contour and then we will give it a resolution so this you can play around with so we will multiply it with our length uh, the arc length so here you can play around with this a little bit um, if you are not getting good results and then you can write here true again because it is closed we are expecting uh, all our shapes to be closed so next we are going to print the value of our approx 
Now, this will give us the points of uh, the corner points. So, of each of them, each of the shapes. So, if we see here, for each of them, we have certain number of uh, points. So, here, for example, we have three points. Uh, here, we have uh, more than three, maybe seven or eight. Then, we have one, two, three, four, three, and then so on. So, what we can do is, instead of printing this, we can print the length of each one of them. So, that will give us the idea of what the shape is. So here you can see we have 3, 8, 3. So we can say that 3 is triangle, 4 is either a square or a, a rectangle. That we will find out later as well. And then we can say that anything above 4 uh, is, is a circle. So because we are only detecting 3 or 4 categories, so we can assume that. So next we are going to um, create our object uh, corners so object corners is equals to length of our approximation and now we are going to create a bounding box around our uh, detected object so now we are going to get the values of our bounding box if we were to dr draw a bounding box around our object what will be the x and y and the width and the height so let's get that x y width and height so we will get that from cv2 dot bounding box bounding rectangle and then a prox. Okay, let's put some spaces here. And here as well. Okay, so this will give us the x, y, and the width and height of uh, each of the uh, objects or the shapes. And uh, let's, let's draw them uh, right away so that we get a clear picture of what we are doing. cv2.rectangle and we we want to draw it so where do we want to draw it let's draw it on the image contour and uh, then we are going to give it the point number one which will be your x and y so it will be x and y and your point number two will be your uh, x plus width and x plus uh, y plus height so it will be x plus width and y plus height uh, then we are going to give it a color. Let's give it uh, a different color so that we can tell it is a bounding rectangle. And then we will give it a thickness. So that should do it. So let's rerun it. And there you go. So now we can see that we have bounding boxes around each of the shapes we are detecting. So uh, from these bounding boxes, we can get information such as uh, what is the total width and height of the object, where is the center point of the object. So these kind of things can be useful maybe um, in another project. But for now, what we will do is we will uh, categorize these objects into whether they are uh, circle whether they are triangle rectangle or square so the first one is uh, let's start with the smallest one which will be our triangle so we will say that if our objects uh, corners are three then we want our object type object type this is a variable uh, to be triangle this is just a string so uh, what we can do is we can print this string out in our image so we can say cv2 dot put text we will define our image contour and uh, then we are going to write what we want to print which will be our object uh, what did i write it as oh this is capital let's make it small so object type and then we are going to write where do we want to print it out so let's print it uh, at the center of the object a little bit shifted from the center of the object so what is the center of the object so this will take some room so i will put it down here 
So the center of the object will be x plus width divided by 2. And uh, we will shift it a little bit. So we will reduce 10 pixels. And then we will um, write the center of our y, which will be y plus height divided by 2. And uh, this we will keep the same. Or should we, let's, let's put some, uh, um, what do you call, deviation in this as well. So let's put minus 10. So it will be a little bit higher uh, than the center point. So what is the next thing? Yeah, the next thing is the font. So we will write cv2.font. Uh, we don't want anything fancy. So we will write, we'll use the first one. And then we will write our scale. Scale, let's put it 0 0.5. And then we have our color. So let's put the color as 0, 255, and then 255. And then the font scale, we will put it as 2. OK, so where did I do the mistake? Because it's not showing it properly. Yes, the comma. OK, so that should give us triangle everywhere there is a triangle. Hmm. Object type reference before hmm. object type. Oh, OK, so we did not define what happens uh, if uh, it's not three. So for now, we can say else uh, object type is equals to is equals to none. So there you go. Oh, that's yellow in color, which is kind of hard to read. So we will put it in a different color. Let's put it black. I think black will be easy to read. And we can increase the size a little bit so it's easier to see. And we can also increase this size because we still have some room. So let's run that. And there you go. So now we can see that all the triangles, they are detected correctly. And the rest of them are none. So next, we are going to define the rest of them. So that will be here. If our object, oh no, it should be else if, else if our objects uh, corners equals four. Now, this one is a little bit tricky. Here, we are going to check if we are getting a square or a rectangle. Now, how can we decide that? What we can do is, we know that a square, if we divide the width and height, we should get one because the width and height of a, uh, a square is the same. So what we can do is we can see that if we divide them, we will get the aspect ratio. And if that aspect ratio is um, between a certain range, we can say it is a square. If it's not, we will say it's a rectangle. So the first thing we will do is we will uh, get the aspect ratio. So we will write aspect ratio is equals to, it will be width divided by height. Since we are dealing with decimal numbers, we have to define one of them as float. Float, so it gives us float value. So once we have that, we are going to put another if statement. If our aspect ratio, um, is greater than 0 0.95 and our aspect ratio is less than 1.05 which means we can have a deviation of 5% then we will say that our object type is equals to uh, square If that's not the case, then our object type is equals to rectangle. So let's run that. And there you go. So here we are getting a square, rectangle, square, square, rectangle, square.
So next we will write it for the circle. So we will write else if object corner is greater than 4 then we are going to write object type is equals to circles so let's run that and there you go so now we have the circle we have the rectangle and we have the square the triangle so all of them we are detecting properly except for this one it will take a little more complication to solve that but we can try that later on to detect faces we are going to use a method proposed by viola and jones this was one of the earliest methods that allowed real-time object detection so if we were to detect faces, we could collect lots of positives, which will be the images of faces. And we will also collect a lot of negatives, which will be the images of anything but faces. Using these negatives and positives, we will train and create a cascade file that will help us find faces. In our case, we are not going to train the model, but instead we will use a pre-trained file for faces, which is provided by OpenCV. Now, OpenCV has provided uh, some default cascades that can detect different things such as number plates, eyes, full body, etc. If you want to learn more about creating custom cascades, I have a separate video for that, which will be available in the description. So we are importing the Lina image from the resources folder and we are displaying it using the imshow function. So the first thing we will do is we will add our cascade. So we will write face cascade, face cascade is equals to cv2 dot cascade classifier. And then we have to write the name. So resources oh, resources sources slash uh, then we will write har gas cascade underscore frontal face underscore default dot xml so let me check the spellings again har gas and frontal face default XML so that looks fine so next we are going to convert our image into grayscale so image uh, gray is equals to CV2 dot uh, CVT color and then image and then we have CV2 dot uh, color RGB to gray then we are going to find the faces in this image uh, using our face cascade so we will say the faces is equals to face cascade dot detect we will use multi scale and we will write image gray and then we have to define the scale factor we will put it as 1.1 and then we have to define the minimum neighbors which we can put it as 4 so these parameters you can change based on the results you are getting so next we are going to uh, create a bounding box around the faces that we have detected so we have to loop through all the faces that we have detected and put rectangles around them so we will write for uh, we will directly get the parameters of our x y and width and height so these are the four parameters that you require to actually create the bounding box so we will we will write x y and then width and height and then we will say in faces and then we will just draw the rectangle uh, let's draw it on the original image and then we will give it the uh, initial points so which are x and y 
and then we have to define the corner points the diagonal points which would be x plus width and uh, y plus height then we need to define the color so let's put it as blue 255 five and zero and zero and then we will define a thickness let's put it as two so yeah that's pretty much it so let's run it and see and there you go so now we have detected the face and uh, we have created a bounding box around it so if you want to detect more objects, there's a lot of cascades available online that people have trained already, or you can create your own custom cascade uh, to detect cars, to detect mobile phones, TVs, anything you can think of, you can detect uh, using these uh, cascade method. Now this cascade method is not the most accurate one, but it is fast. So a lot of the cameras, uh, they also use these uh, hard cascade methods to find the faces. Uh, still, even though it's uh, quite an old um, algorithm, but still it works and it works well in certain circumstances. So for this project, we need to find our colors and uh, we need to find it using a webcam and then we can place different points wherever we find our colors uh, to create the paint example. So what we need first is the webcam. So what we are going to do is we are going to take the code from our different projects and we will merge these together so that we can see how we can efficiently create different projects. So we are going to go back to our chapter one and here we have the code for our webcam. So we are going to copy this and we will paste it in our project. So as we can see, we are importing our library. We are setting the width and height of our frame. And uh, these are ID number three and ID number four. Then we are also setting up the brightness. Let's make it 150. And uh, then we have our, now our device is not zero. It's supposed to be one. And then we are uh, getting into our while loop where we are getting our image and uh, then we are displaying it using the I am show function and that's pretty much it so if I run this now it should show me the webcam and there you go so here we have our webcam and let's see if we can see yeah so that is clear so once we have this oh, the next step we are going to do is we are going to find our colors so to find our color, what we need to do is we need to bring in the code of uh, the color detection. So that was in chapter seven or six, it was in seven. So here we have the code. So we don't need the stacking. Um, we're trying to make it simplified. And uh, so we don't need that. So what we'll do is we will copy the main code of our uh, color detection which is basically the lower upper and the mask so this is the main thing that we will be needing and we will also need to convert it into this hsv space so the normal image into hsv so let's let's copy that first so we will copy it here and here we are going to define um define a function to find our color so we will say uh, find color and then we are going to input it an image at least for now we will just keep it an image and then we will take this image and we will convert it into the hsv space and from there we are going to use our upper and lower limits to so let me remove that. 
so here we have our upper and lower limits and uh, then um, what can we do then we can just show that if it's working properly or not so cv2 dot im show and we can put for example image and we need to show our mask so this is just for testing we'll remove it later on so we don't want to find just one color we want to find different colors so whenever we call upon the function find color we want to find all the different types of colors and whatever is present we want to see that as the output so what we can do is at the top here we can define something uh, in the form of a list as our color uh, minimums and maximum for the hue so what do I mean by that so let me write that down we will say my colors is equals to a list now this is a list let me comment this because it's annoying so uh, my colors is basically a list of colors that we have uh, that we want to detect so we need to give it the minimum and the maximum hue and saturation values for that I have written down a code by the name color picker so th basically what it uh, does it it helps us pick the right hue and saturation values using a webcam so it's pretty much the same code but added with the webcam that we have done in our color chapter so here we have our webcam and we have the color orange so let me find the values for that what you need to do is you need to keep the orange as white and the rest you have to remove so here you can see you have to go until yeah so I would say that is a good point so if I move it around it's not so bad but my hand color is also being detected so we need to remove that mm -hmm. bring it down a little bit and there you go so it's much better now so this way uh, what we need to do is we need to note down these values so it's 51070192255 so what we will do is we will create a list over here and inside that list we are going to write down these values so let me write this down so we have 5 so we have 5 51070192255 and then 255 so these are our values as you can see here so we will create a list of these values uh, different types where oh, what happened there where we will write down all the different types of colors that we want to detect so i have done it for blue uh, not blue a uh, purple and green so we will just copy that values here so this is one of them and then we have another one over here so these are our values so the first one is orange then purple and then green so these are the values that you can find from the color picker once we have done that now we can simply uh, create our mask so here we can say that okay we need to add numpy so import numpy as np and the second thing we need to do is we need to uh, put down our values so we know that this part here is basically the first three values here and then this part here is the the other three values sorry the other three values over here so what we can do is we can simply write that um, our uh, what do you call list of my colors basically my colors and we can define let's say we will pick the first element which is 0 and then we will write down that from 0 from 0 till 3 we need uh, those as the first elements so 
we can define here that we need my color as the input and then we can do the same thing here and this will be the upper limit which will be from 3 to 6 so that should give us one of them which is the first one which is I think orange so let's run that this is the previous code we need to run project one so let's run that and uh, no we need to call the function as well so here after this we are going to call our function and my colors so let's run that and there you go we're getting the mask and if I bring my orange color and you can see that it is detected properly but that's the thing like we are only detecting orange we need to detect all the colors we have in this list so for that we need to add on a for loop so we can say for uh, let's say color color in my colors for each of these colors we are going to create a mask so we don't need to write this down we can just replace this with colors color and then again color so if we want to display this out um, we cannot have a generic name we need to put a name that is changing um, let's use so the first element is different for each one of them so we can put that as a name so we can say string and then color the first element and that should give us three different windows so if we run that and there you go so we are getting three different windows uh, forget about the naming for now we're just testing it out so if I put the orange color I can see the orange one if I put the purple one I can see purple and then if I put green I can see the third one in green so if I wanted to add more colors I can simply just add it to the list and that should give me um, more colors for example if I remove this now let me remove that and it will only give me two of the masks so it will not show me green anymore so this way we have created something generic that will work for multiple colors so you can keep adding more and more now for each of the masks that we have detected let me comment this out for each of the masks that we have detected we need to find where is uh, this object that we have found in our image now to find that we need to get our contours and we need to approximate the uh, the bounding box around it so we can find our location of the object so for that we need to get into the code of our one of our previous chapters in which we learned how to find contours so if we go back this is the code for finding contours so what we will do is we will just get this function as it is and we don't need to differentiate between different shapes so we will get it till our bounding box we will copy this and in the project we will paste it here so this is our get contours function and now what we need to do is we need to change it a little bit so that we get the relevant information that we need so there's not a lot of things that will change so let's remove anything uh, image contour okay what we can do is we can create a new image uh, we can say let's say image result is equals to uh, image copy so this will be the image that will have all the final information on it so all the drawings and everything will be on this image so we can copy image result and we can replace it here so it will draw the contours on this image and then what we don't need okay we can remove the parameters and we don't need the length or the object and that's that's pretty much it so what we can do is now uh, just to see if we are on the right track uh, we just can see that if it's printing properly or not so from the find color we are going to send this image of our mask 
to find the contours so we will send this we will say get contours and we will send the mask and uh, because we are calling this function it should draw on this uh, image so let's see if that works so what happened okay let me yeah we removed that so it should not display any of the masks so let's try that out orange green purple so none of them are working great uh, let's find out why so when we are sending the mask oh okay because we did not put here image results so we need to display the image result because that is the one that will have the the elements on it so let's run that there you go so we have orange we have green and we have purple perfect so now that we know that we are getting those and we are getting the bounding box around it all we need to do is we need to send these values now we can send the center point but um, we, we want to draw from the tip of the pen not from the center of the object detected so we will send the center rather than uh, so we'll send the tip rather than the center so what we will do is we will return so here we will return and we are going to return the value of x plus our width divided by 2 so it's in the center and then we are going to send the the value of y as it is so this will give us the top point of our tip point and the center of it as well and uh, in case if it's not if it's not greater than 500 or if it's not detected we still need to return something so for that we need to declare these as zeros so we can say x y x y w and height just in case if we need it later on we can put all of them as zeros so we can get those so it will return this value so we need to get this value over here so that we can use it so we will put it here as x and y so once we have that value uh, we can draw a circle around it so we can say cv2 dot circle and we need to draw it on the image results and uh, our center point will be x and y and then we will define the radius let's say 10 then we have to define the color for now let's say 255 0 and 0 and then we are going to write cv2 dot filled as we want it filled so if we run that now let's see what happens so if i go here yeah so i'm getting the blue uh, point now i can see that I'm getting the correct point now again this is this is the center of the bounding box so if I turn it around the bounding box it will be the center of the bounding box not the center of the contours uh, to fix that it's a little bit tricky so we're not gonna go into that much detail but for now it should be fine if we keep the pen straight now one thing we need to change is the color so it should not be blue it should be the color that we are detecting so we, we can remove the contour we, we don't need the contours anymore we know that we are detecting it properly but we need to uh, change the colors of these objects so what we need to do is we need to define our color values so for example if this is detected what should be my color on my drawing uh, so we can say that we can call this my color values and again we have to create it as a list and in that list we need to define all the colors that we want to display so we have three so we will define three now next here we are going to write our values so uh, how, how can you find these values so here we can see an example website uh, where you can find uh, the RGB values. So if 
I go to orange so orange right now if I click on it uh, you can see it's 255 153 and 51 so this is my value of the orange so what I can do is I can use these values in my um, what do you call code so so but again you have to make sure you are writing in the format of BGR so let me write that down here so it is BGR not RGB so we have to write so here we will have 51 then 153 and then 255 similarly we can find for purple and uh, green so for that for purple it is 255 0 and 255 and for green we all know it is BGR so it should be 0 255 and 0 so these are our colors now and what we can do is uh, we can draw the color of the circle based on these values oh, what happened so what we can say is we can say that we need my color value as the input as well so if we go down when we are sending the values we need my color values as well so we can say uh, what can we say okay we need a counter to actually count how many times so we'll put count is equals to zero and every time it counts we need to know which color are we talking about so we can say here counts plus equals one so instead of our main blue color here we can say my color values and I need to get the value of my counter index so my count right now whatever my count is I need to get that value from this um, what do you call list so if it's uh, count is equals to zero it will get this value count is one it will get this value so I can write here uh, count so this should give us uh, the correct color of our what do you call uh, marker so let's run that so if I have purple it's giving me the color purple if I have orange it's giving me orange it's a little bit hard to see but you get the gesture and then you have green so we are getting green so that is good we are getting the correct colors and the correct values now what we need to do is we need to draw these points so in order to draw it's uh, actually fairly simple uh, we are going to create a list of points and we are just going to display it uh, every time and we are going to loop it around so at the bottom um, let's go at the top first and we are going to create a list called my points and inside these uh, list we are going to have three things we are going to have the value of X we are going to have the value of Y and we are going to have the value of the color or not the color itself let's put the index of the color so we can say if it's zero it will be this color if it's one it will be this color and so on so instead of the real thing we can put this so let me copy that and let me put it as a comment here so so what we can say is we can loop uh, this my points and every time we can check the value of x y and we can draw the circle of this color at this point so it's fairly simple so in order to do that what we can do is we can create a new function called draw on canvas so we can name it draw on canvas and then what do we need we need um, I yeah we need the points and we will also need the color values my color values so what we will do is we will say that for each point in my points what we need to do is we need to iterate and we need to just draw a circle let me just copy it from up here we can copy it the circle and we can put it here that what we need to do is we need to uh, draw on IM result 
uh, our image result and we need to uh, use the color of our count so this time around the values are inside the points so we will say that point at 0 is our x point at 1 is our y and our id is point at number 2 so this will give us the point at this color of this color now what we need to do is whenever we are finding the colors uh, we need to send to draw okay so what we can say is that we can say that our new points points is equals to uh, whatever we are getting from our colors and then we need to draw them so in order to draw them um, or should we do that first let's go up and uh, let's return something over here so once we are finding the color we need to return our new points but we need to make sure that uh, these points are not um, like they are detected properly these are not zero zero so if it's zero zero um, if the x and y if the value that we are returning is zero zero then we don't need to do anything uh, we don't need to plot it it will just uh, add on the memory so what we can say is that uh, before the count we can say that if x is not equals to zero and if y is not equals to zero then only we are going to append our points so we will say new points um, dot append and we are going to say that we are going to write down the x y and the count because that is our id and we need to define the new points every time so every time the new points will change so it will start with an empty mate, uh, empty list and then it will append and it will return these values so here we need to write return not in the loop we need to write here return and then we are going to return our points so every time it adds on to these points it will send these new points over here now once we have our new points what we can do is we can check uh, if the new points are actually there or not so we will say that if the length of our new points is not equals to zero that we are getting something then oh, what is that not equals to zero then we need to iterate through our points so for new points uh, in new points we are going to append my points my points dot append and we are going to append our new point so why why are we putting a for loop here because we are getting it as a list so we cannot put a list inside a list uh, and then run our code of draw on canvas because it doesn't work that way we need uh, all the points not a list inside a list so this is a list we need to break it down to points again so that's why we are putting a loop here so for new point in uh, in our new points we are going to append each one of them in our points and at the end we all we need to do is we need to draw these points if they are available so we can say that if the length of my points is not equals to zero then we need to draw them so draw uh, draw on canvas and my points and use my color can values so this should draw all our colors in the right values let's see so here we have our purple and there you go so you can see it's drawing purple then we have orange it's drawing orange and then we have our green so it's drawing green so there you go so this is very simple um, and it is a very kind of a generic code so that you can add on to it it's not hard coded that this color equals this this color equals this we are not creating 
a lot of masks uh, hard coded and putting them together so if you wanted to add a new color it's very simple um, all you need to do is you need to go and add to my colors and my color value so for example if I wanted to do blue uh, I have uh, checked out the values for blue and uh, again you can use the color picker uh, code to find the values you can add that and all, we know already that our blue is basically BGR so it will be 255 0 and 0 so this will add the blue color and if we run it now and let me try the blue here and there you go so now it's detecting blue as well so this is how simple it is to add more colors so the good thing about this is that it will detect all the colors at the same time as well so if we look here we have these four colors and we can detect them at the same time you can see that looks nice So in this project, we are going to start off with the webcam code, which we did in the first chapter. So let me go and copy this. And uh, let's change the parameters. We'll do it as one and this will be 50. So let's run it. And there we have our webcam so we are going to detect this document and then we are going to uh, use word perspective to get the flat out image of our documents which we will scan now let's move on so the first thing we are going to do is uh, we are going to pre-process our image so we will apply some um, what do you call pre-processing techniques so we can detect the uh, what do you call the edges in our image properly so let's define a function pre-processing and here we are going to input an image so we will say image and then we are going to convert this image uh, first of all we will resize it so image is equals to cv2 dot resize or let's resize it over here so that the size remains the same for uh, the whole process so resize and we are going to resize our original image with our width and height so width of our image and height of our image so this we can declare at the top um, let's create a new section here for the declarations to 640 and this one here is 480 so let's remove that and put this instead so that being done um, okay so so the first thing we will do is we will convert it into grayscale so we will say image gray is equals to <coughs> cv2 dot uh, cvt color and then our source is our main image and then we want to convert it into grayscale so cv2 dot color pgr to gray next we are going to apply some blur so image blur is equals to cv2 dot Gaussian blur and uh, we have our image gray to blur and then we will apply uh, we will 
give the size of the kernel 5 by 5 and then the sigma x let's say 1 and then we will uh, find our edges using our canny edge detector so we will say image canny is equals to cv2 dot canny and our image is blur and then we have the threshold so we'll put um, let's say 200 by 200 so these values we can change as we move along but for now we are going to keep um, some random values and let's see how they go <coughs> uh, once we have done that um, sometimes the edges are very thin so what we can do is we can use the dilation function to make them thicker and uh, then we can um, use the erosion function to make it a little bit thinner again so <coughs> what we can do is we can apply two passes of uh, dilation and one pass of um, what you call erosion now this is not compulsory but it helps so it is better to do it uh, dilation is equals to cv2 dot dilate dilate yeah and then we are going to use our image canny and we are going to define a kernel and then the iteration iteration is equals to Two. so there is a mistake somewhere okay so kernel is equals to we are going to define uh, an array of um, uh, a matrix of uh, ones so we need to define here import numpy as np and over here we are going to say that our kernel is numpy of ones and the size is 5 by 5 then we are going to erode it so image erode is equals to cv2 actually this is the final result so let's call it threshold image threshold is equals to cv2 dot erode and uh, then we are going to input our image dilation and then we are going to define our kernel and the uh, iterations as one so once we process that uh, we can return our image return image threshold so we can say here um, image threshold is equals to pre-processing of our main image so we can display the image threshold and there we go so we are getting so if we wanted to see the uh, what do you call the output of each of these steps we can uh, simply <coughs> what do you call uh, comment it out and return the one we want to see for example if we want to remove these two we can comment it out and return the canny instead so if we look at that so here you can see our edges are quite thin and sometimes uh, when there's some shadow or some reflections then it might not detect properly that's why we are adding this uh, here as well so we need to return the threshold and there you go so the boundaries are much thicker and easier to detect what is happening in the image so next we are going to uh, move on to our contours so we need to find the biggest contour in our image so this is what we will do now so in chapter 8 uh, for the contours we use the function get contours so we are going to copy that till our bounding box and we will make some changes 
So here we'll paste it out and uh, now we have the get contour function. So what we can do is uh, we need to find the biggest one uh, that is available to us. So here we are first getting our contours and then for each of them we are looping again and again. So what we can say is that first of all we need to give a threshold for the area. Uh, I think it's better to add another zero because our area will be quite big. We can remove the print and to draw we can copy an image here. So we can say image uh, let's say contours let's write contours is equals to uh, image dot copy actually we should do it after the resize because all of them are all of them should be same so let's go down and then we'll write it here and then here we'll paste oh, here we will paste our image contour actually let's use this spelling it's better image contour so we can display it out what is happening so um, then we will remove this parameter and we don't need to see the length do we need to see the length yes we do need to see the length and uh, it should be 4 and uh, then uh, do we need the mounting box uh, yes okay so what we are going to do is first we are getting our area and then we are checking that if it uh, is greater than 5000 if it's good then we will move on to the next step we will draw it on uh, uh, our image or do we need to draw we will see if we need to remove it later now we will get our uh, parameter and then we are going to find uh, our approximation of our corner points and then we have to say that if our area uh, no, sorry, if our length of our approximation is equals to 4, in that case, what we will do is, uh, we will say that the biggest is equals to approx. And, uh, but as it loops, we need to find the biggest one. So we have to put another condition here. We will say that if our area uh, is greater than the max area so we'll put an and here sorry we'll put an and here and then here we will say that max area is equals to our current area so what this will do is it will keep looping again and again and whenever it finds a value that is bigger than what it has before it will replace the value of uh, the current one so this will give us the biggest uh, area and the biggest of our approximation which will be our four uh, points so do we need this not really so we can remove this with the bounding box and then all we need to do is we need to return uh, our approximation so we will return approx oh sorry we'll return the biggest one biggest so this will give us our biggest contour okay so let's run that and see what happens now we need to call it so here we are going to say that get contours and we will send the image threshold okay so one thing that we forgot to do is to define initially our variables so the first one is uh, a list so the biggest will be a numpy uh, list uh, a numpy array numpy dot array and the second one is the max area so we will say max area is equals to zero so if we run that again and there you go so now we are getting our contours and uh, hopefully it is returning us the biggest one which is this blue one 
So once we have our biggest contour, what we need to do next is using its corner points, we need to warp our image and get the bird's eye view. So in order to do that, uh, what we will do is, we will first of all get our approximation here. So we can say that our biggest is equals to get contours image threshold. And then after that, what we need to do is, we need to send it for word perspective. So we will write a new function. So we will say get warp and inside we are going to send our image and we are going to send, um, what do we need to send? We need to send our biggest contour point. So here we can call this function get warp of our original image and we need uh, based on the biggest points so actually we didn't print out let's see if we are getting it properly so let's just print out uh, once we are getting the biggest one let's print it out so there we go we are getting four points so one two three and four <clears throat> so we are getting them properly so whether they are the correct one or not we will look into that uh, furthermore or um, we can print it out right now should we print it out right now yeah actually we can what we can do is instead of printing them all we can copy this and we can comment this out and the last one we can do is we can print out the biggest one before it sends so we can say here biggest and there you go so if we look at it let me increase that size let's make it 20 So there you go. So we are getting the correct points of our biggest contour. So the next uh, part will be to warp. So now we are going to warp. Where is that function? So, okay. <clears throat> so in the warp, uh, we are going to follow what we have done before in our previous examples. That was in chapter for the warping. So here we have, um, for warping, we need two points. And then we create a matrix and then we get our word perspective so we will copy all of that and we will bring it into our current project so we need to uh, find out these points one and then these points two and then we create the metrics and based on that we have the width and the height so this width and height are basically uh, the width and height of our image so we will say width image and height image again width image and height image and then width image and then height image okay we can remove the pass okay so the next step would be to uh, put our points here so we are getting our biggest uh, contour and all we need to do is we need to input the biggest contours over here so there are already four points so that way we can easily uh, put it directly over here now the next thing is fine over here so what we need to do is we need to look at our image and there's a tricky part here and I will explain what that is but just let's just look at our output image so we can say here that return our image outputs and here we can call this function we can say get warp and then we can say that our warped 
image warped. Image warped is equals to dot. And let's show that. So there you go. So <clears throat> now we knew that our points are being detected properly. But as you can see here, the warping is not correct. And if I move it around, and it even gives us an error. So the reason why the warping is wrong is because we have an annotation, we have a structure at which our points should be. So the first uh, point in our biggest contour uh, should be 0, 0, and then width 0, then 0 height, and then width and height. If, for example, in the biggest contour, our width and height is in the first one, and the 0, 0 in the, in the second one, or it's mixed up, then it means that our work perspective will not proper, uh, properly work. So what we need to make sure of is that when we are sending the points to warp, all of our uh, points are aligned like this. So the smallest one should be the first one, then the width and height, uh, the width and zero, then the zero and height, and then the width and the height. So how can we make sure of that? Because our values can vary, it can keep changing. For so uh, what I'm trying to tell is that these values can change uh, based on uh, the angle of the paper and uh, based on uh, the contour as well. So what we have to do is we have to arrange these values, uh, these biggest points before we send it for warping. So we have to reorder them. So we will create a new function. We will say reorder. And inside that, we will need our uh, points. So my points, we need some points inside. And then we are going to apply some methodology inside here that will allow us to create um, or reorder our points. <coughs> so if we have, uh, for example, let me make it a little bit simpler if you run this now wait let me write pass <coughs> if we add these values up what we can do is we can add these values up and we can find the smallest and the biggest point so for example if we add zero zero and we add width and height, uh, width and zero, zero and height, and width and height, the smallest point will be the zero, zero. And the biggest point will be width and height. So this means that whatever points we are given here, if we add all of them up, the smallest one we will get will be our zero, zero. And the biggest one we will get will be our width and height. So this way we can quickly sort out which one is the biggest and which one is the smallest. So which one is the origin and which one is the diagonal point um, of our corner of our uh, rectangle or the last point. And then to find the width zero and the zero height, we can subtract them and one of them will give us a positive value and one of them will give us a negative value. And based on that, we can tell uh, which one comes first and which one comes second. So what we need to do is we need to first uh, let, let me show you something before we go ahead um, here so if we look at the shape of our um, what do you call it, array or the matrix of biggest let's have a look at that so it is four by one by two. <clears throat> so we have four different points that we understand. And for each point, we have X and Y that we understand as well. But that one is redundant. So what we will do is we will remove that one. So when we are about to reorder, the first thing we will do is we will say my points is equals to my points dot reshape. And we are going to write, uh, we want to reshape it as 4 by 2. And then we are going to create a new matrix that we will send outside 
uh, that we will return from this function. And that uh, matrix should be the same as what we are receiving over here, which is 4 by 1 by 2. Okay, so we will write my points uh, new is equals to numpy dot zeros zeros and then we can say 4 by 1 by 2 and then we can write uh, its type so numpy dot integer 32 <laughs> so the first thing we will do is we will add uh, as we have discussed we will add all of these values so inside we have four points let me print this out so it's easier to see we will print biggest so th the first step we are going to do is we are going to add each one of them so 185 plus 55 then 61 plus 279 and so on so in order to do that we have a easy function we can say add is equals to my points dot sum and we are going to use axis one so this will give us uh, let's print it out and we can say our add is add. Uh, we are not sending it to reorder that's why it's not showing up so what we can do is we can write here or this should be inside the verb so uh, we can write here reorder and we can send the biggest points so if we stop that we can see that uh, over here 183 plus 55 is 238 and then 61 plus uh, 279 is 340 and then so on we are getting our values so uh, the smallest one here is our first one so we are going to say that is our point zero and the biggest one here is 651 and we're going to say that is our width and height so this one is at the correct position it should be at zero zero but this one is at the wrong position this should be the last one so we are going to rearrange our order in our new points so we will say here that my points new at number zero which will be the first one is equals to my points and we are going to get uh, the index so we are going to first of all find the smallest one so we will say that numpy dot arg minimum and we are going to say that find the smallest one uh, the index of the smallest uh, of this list or of this matrix so here we are going to find the smallest value and we are going to get its index once we have its index we are going to put it here and from that we are getting the values the actual x and y and then we are storing it in our new points the same thing we will do it for the biggest one which will be the last one as 0 1 2 3 and this time around we will write it as max so if we run that uh, let me print that out uh, print new points and we can write my new points so if we print that So here we can see that uh, our new points, now the smallest one is at the first point and the biggest one is at the last point here. So now we need to find the ones in the middle. So <coughs> next we are going to, we can remove or let, let's keep them for now. So next we are going to find the difference between them. So we can say the difference is equals to numpy dot difference and we are going to use my points and again we are going to uh, define our axis as one actually let me write it 
you can define it like this axis as one so uh, then based on this we are going to say that my points uh, the new ones at number one is equals to this should be our uh, width and zero so this one will be my points at numpy dot the minimum argument of our uh, differentiation and the same way let me write here the same way the second one will be the maximum of our argument so let's run that okay let me print this out but at the bottom okay if we run that and we stop it so now you can see that our points are rearranged so we are getting width and then uh, zero and then zero and then height by zero i mean it's a lower value so here our points are rearranged you can see our original points are like this and then our arranged points are like this so now we have our new points so we can send them back so should i delete okay let me put it as a comment so if you want to check you can check it and then we can write return uh, my points new so this will give us the biggest points rearranged so we will say that biggest is equals to reorder biggest so if we run this now hopefully it will come up properly and there you go so our image is showing properly and we are getting our work perspective the image as work now the problem is that one thing is that the width is too much we need to reduce it let's make it 360 okay the camera cannot be so 640 my camera has this issue so it has to be 640 by 480 that we can do there so why is it still okay 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 so this is supposed to be opposite so this should be 640 and this should be 360 Mm, let's make it 480 yeah much better so this is what we are getting and now uh, the thing is that our original image is 640 by 480 so don't expect a lot of resolution over here but um, I have put an image in the resources folder so if you look at the resources folder we have uh, a paper image and this image is really high resolution it is uh, 4000 by 3000 so if you apply the same method on this one it will give you a really good scanned image at the end but because we are getting it from a live webcam and it is uh, only 640 by 480 that's why the resolution is not that good but if you can uh, bump up the values you will get much higher resolution so that is good for now but uh, one thing we can see is that the warp is good but we can see some lines at the end and we don't want that we what we can do is we can afford a little bit of a cutout uh, a little bit of a crop uh, around the edges so that we get some better results so what we can do is we can um, after warping it we can reduce some pixels so let's put it in the warp <coughs> So here we can say that our, uh, let's say, image uh, output, or should we name it different? Let's name it different. So image um, cropped is equals to we are going to crop our image so we are going to say that our original image is img output and then we are going to remove 20 pixels uh, from each side so we will say 20 then image output dot shape 
at 0 and then we will minus 20 from here as well and then we will say 20 again and then we will say that our image output dot shape which is at 1 minus 20 so this is the same concept uh, what we have done before in our cropping example so if you don't remember that you can check that uh, chapter again so once we have done that we need to resize the image uh, so that it becomes as the same size as before because uh, it will be easier to play around with it so cropped is equals to cv2 dot resize and then our image crop and then our width of our image and then height of our image and then we can output the cropped image instead so if we run that now we are getting a much cleaner image uh, we have removed 20 pixels from each side and uh, now it looks more like a scanned paper okay so next what we can do is um, if we want to look at uh, what do you call the workflow we can add our um, joining images code which is our stacking uh, if we wanted to do that so we can go back we can go to chapter 6 and here we have the function for stacking we can copy this and we can paste it in our current project and just to put all these images together so which of the images should we put together so this is uh, just a formality to see what is going on um, so and there is another case that I will discuss now and you will see why uh, that is important as well um, let, let's just stack the images first so we will say that our image array is equals to we, we are going to declare an array so here we'll put our original image then we can put our image contour and then we can put the uh, image biggest where is that uh, image threshold so let's put it down so we can put it here image threshold and then we can put image worked so this should give us a good idea and uh, then we will just say that um, stack the images so we will say stacked images is equals to stack images and we will uh, define a scale so let's say 0 0.6 and then we are going to define our array so image worked oh sorry image array and then here we will copy this and paste it paste it here So there you go so now we can see the workflow we have our document then we are getting our um, what do you call the biggest contours and then uh, actually this should be here this should be here it's the other way around so where is it so that is better I guess yeah so that is better so again uh, now uh, we are rescaling it so that it, it because of that it's looking a little bit weird but if we print it out separately it should be fine uh, what is it image worked So here we have our final result now one thing you will note now if I remove the document uh, it should give us an error there you go now this error is because uh, we did not define 
anything when uh, it does not define the biggest it does not find the biggest contour so we need to uh, write that down here so we will say that we are going to find the biggest contour uh, let me see up if we want to put it up or here okay so yeah we are sending the biggest I think it's better to put it down here so <clears throat> what we can do is we can say that if our biggest is not equals to zero uh, or it's if it's not empty then we need to go forward so we can say that if uh, biggest dot sorry dot size is not equals to zero then we are going to do this image work otherwise um, and this should be inside as well and this can be outside otherwise else we are going to uh, display the images still but we will not display the contours because we didn't find them and we will not display the verb we will just replace it with the original image so let's see if that works so if i remove that yeah so when i remove it uh, it doesn't show anything and then when i bring it back it's now showing me the live image So in this project, we are going to start off with our webcam and then we will detect uh, number plates uh, from different cars and we are going to do this in real time and we will be using the cascade method that we have learned before in uh, our <coughs> phase detection chapter. And uh, so let's start with our chapter number one where we started off with the webcam. So we will copy that code and uh, again we will change this to 1. So let's run that and see if it works properly. So here I have my webcam and it is connected and we can see we have a few images of our car and we have these three images and we are going to detect their number plates so once we have done that uh, we will go into chapter 9 where we did our <coughs> cascade method and we are going to copy this and we will paste it in project 3 So here, uh, to get the cascade, we do not need to define it again and again. Uh, even though we have to get the image, the image we're getting from the webcam, we can remove that. This we have to bring it up in our parameters. So here we can define our parameters. And then we are converting our image to gray that is fine and then we are detecting the the faces so in this case we can say that a number plates and we can copy this and paste it here so instead of the face cascade we should say plate cascade for example or number plate cascade so 
here we can say that and let me do that again okay and uh, it's drawing the rectangle around it now what we need to do is uh, once we detect our object we need to first create a filter so we are only taking objects that are bigger than a certain area and uh, then we need to define a way in which we can save our images once we are getting our number plate so let's do that so the first thing we will add our filter so in order to do that we need to find our area so area is equals to width into height and then uh, we need to define our minimum area so we can say that if our area is greater than for example 500 so this is our minimum area so we'll say minimum area and we will define it here minimum area is equals to 500 if it's greater than 500 then we are going to detect it as our rectangle and uh, the next thing we will do is uh, we will label it so we will say cv2 dot put text and we want to put it on our original image and then we are going to put a name so we can say number number plate and then we have our x and y so we can write x and y we want to place it a little bit higher so we will subtract let's say 5 and then we will write our font so cv2.font we can um, select any let's select the complex small and then we'll put one as our scale and then we will put a color so we can define color and then we will put the thickness as two so the color we can go up and define here as uh, two five five zero and two five five mm, yeah and um, then what we can do is we can extract our uh, region of interest our number plate so once we have our rectangle x y width and height we can use this information to get our original uh, our number plate image so we can say that our image of our region of interest is image our original image cropped so as you know we are using crop uh, so the first element will be our height so we are saying y till y plus h the total height and then we will say our width till our uh, sorry not the width x till our x plus width so this should give us the the region of our number plate so we need to place this uh, here whenever the object is detected whenever the number plate is detected then only we are going to uh, display our image <clears throat> and the last thing we have to do is to change our cascade which over here is the frontal face in the resources we have the Russian plate number so we are going to use that so we will change this to Russian underscore plates underscore number so let's run that so there we go we are getting our number plate on the original image and then we are extracting our ROI as you can see here it's a little bit small to, it is harder to grab but you can see we are getting our uh, image correctly but the color here is blue why is that blue yeah we need to change it to 255 so that it's the same 
so there you go so this is what we are getting and uh, next what we can do is we can save this uh, image in our scan folder so in the resources I've created a scan folder so what we will do is we will write a code that will save this number plate and it will also give us feedback that we have saved it so to do that we will write cv2 so let's first change this from q to s so whenever the s key is pressed so we will write cv2 cv2 dot wait uh, cv2 dot i am right and we will write the file name so we will say resources and then scan and inside that we are going to write number plate underscore um, and then we are going to add a string to it and in that string we are going to put a count so that we can save multiple images at the same time with different names so we can say dot jpg and then we will say that our image of ROI now this count is not defined so we have to define the count so each time we press this we have to add to our counter so we will not break we will say count uh, is plus equals one and we need to define the count in the beginning count is equals to zero so that will save it but what we need is a little bit of feedback that we are actually saving it properly so what we can do is we can create a rectangle and uh, then we can display that with the text on it so that we know it has been saved so we can write cv2 dot rectangle and then we will write our image here we will uh, put it at 0 200 and then the final point will be 640 by let's say 300 and then we will put a color 0 255 0 and then cv2 dot filled and then we are going to put some text on it cv2 dot put text and we'll put our image and we are going to say scanned uh, let's say scan saved and then we will put um, the initial values so we'll put 150 and 265 and then we will give it a font cv2 dot font um, let's pick a random one and then um, let's let's put down let's put the font scale as two then we will put our color uh, zero zero and two five five and then we will put our thickness as two lastly we are going to show our image so i am show and then we are going to write the same name result and we are going to show the same image and in order to see it properly we will add a delay cv2 dot wait key and we will put 500 milliseconds so if i run this now and there you go so if i press s it will say scan saved and then if i go to the next image i can save again i can go to the next image and i can save so all three of these number plates should have been saved. If we go to our scanned folder here, we can double click it and we can see we have three images. This is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one.